Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and this here is Fidget and Mira. And in this video, I'm going to be going through some things I have in my first aid kit for chinchillas. First of all, I'd like to say, how is everybody? I know it's a very, very strange and confusing time at the moment with all the lockdowns happening and I'm considered a key worker, so I'm still at work, but a lot of people are out of work at the moment. And um, uh, yeah, so it's a very, very strange time. Luckily, we've got the chinchillas to keep us company and keep us amused. So anyway, with this video, I'm going to be going through some things that I have in my first aid kit because with all pets, you have to make sure you have some sort of emergency kit available to them if the worst should happen. Now this should not ever replace a vet's visit at all. This is just things that you can do at home to help out with um, conditions. Let's go through some things I've got in my first aid kit. So the first thing I've got, so this is critical care. Now this is used for when your chinchilla has stopped eating or it could be they've got a problem with their teeth or they've been to a vet visit, had an operation and need to be fed through syringe. Now this is like a fine powder and you add water to it so it's like a pasty consistency and you can either syringe feed it or if the chinchilla's um, strong enough they normally will take it off a spoon. So I always like to have some syringes as well just in case. So just in case they won't eat off, eat off a spoon, you can feed them this. Now this is really quite expensive. It's 15 pounds for a little tiny pouch, but it does go a long way and it does have everything they need in it to help them regain strength and to be healthy. Now, if you don't have critical care, there are other options available. You can blend up your own pellets to a powder and then add water and then try syringe feeding that. But if your chinchilla is not eating or has stopped eating, please use this but take them to a vet because there might be something seriously wrong, especially if they're not eating because of teeth problems. So yeah, and then as I say, if, if your chinchilla's had an operation, any kind of operation, the vet would normally recommend giving them this as a way of feeding them while they recuperate and recover. So yeah, always worth having a having a bag of this. And if you haven't got a bag of this, you can bl blend up pellets for them to have. So yeah, that's my first item that is in my first aid kit. Second thing I normally have in my first aid kit, but I haven't got at the moment, is Infocol. Now Infocol is infant gas drops. It's used for babies with colic which is a thing that babies can get, which is a buildup of gas. And basically, this is what you use this for if your chinchilla has bloat. You have to put a small amount of drops, give them a small amount of drops, and that will actually help disperse any gas that's in the chinchilla. Now this, again, doesn't replace a vet's visit because with bloat, if it isn't treated correctly or isn't treated in time, it can actually lead to really, really serious health conditions and really, really serious problems. It can cause your chinchilla to die. Chinchillas do die of bloat. So it's really important to still see a vet for a medical checkup, but this is something that can relieve the symptoms and sometimes relieve bloat. All bloat is, is a buildup of gas in the digestive system. And it's normally caused by an incorrect diet or an imbalanced diet. So for example, if you're feeding too many treats, your chinchilla may get bloat. If you're feeding not the right diet to the chinchilla, they may get bloat. And what it feels like, it feels like a firm, hard belly. And they will be stretching a lot to try and release some of the gas. But they can't really release it, which is why it causes problems. I haven't got any in my first aid box at the moment because the last lot I had actually expired and at the moment with the way 
people are panic buying stuff they're also panic buying baby stuff and I don't want to take away from a mother having her baby stuff through me buying it for my chinchilla if that makes sense so at the moment if any of my chinchillas show signs of bloats I'm just taking them to the vet next thing I have is saline eye drops and we use these if your chinchilla has an infected eye you can use these to just kind of clear the eye but if your chinchilla is having eye problems it's got a watery eye or gum coming out of the eye you always still need to see a vet but this can help with the symptoms in the meantime so up so saline eye drops are really good I also have some glass eye droppers so this is pseudocreme Pseudocrem is just nappy rash cream and it's just moisturiser. You can use other things like Vaseline and all kinds of other things for this, but Pseudocrem is fine for them. Um, I generally use it on their ears if their ears are a bit dry, but I don't really moisturise their feet because chinchillas are meant to have quite dry and hard feet. And if you moisturise them, it can actually lead to actual feet problem because chinchillas feet are not meant to be soft they're meant to be hard and the hardness actually protects them from injury so i generally don't use it on their feet if their feet are extremely sore and kind of cracked yes i may put a little bit on but other than that i really don't if your chinchillas feet are bleeding i would honestly seek medical attention for your chinchilla because it might lead to further infection. So yeah, so that's Sudocrem. The next thing I have is just an antiseptic cream. You can use this or you can use, there's another one called Savlon that you can use. And this is basically to treat really mi minor wounds and cuts. Anything major you would need to see a vet with, but this is to treat mi minor cuts and wounds. Luckily, I've never had to use this with my chinchillas, so that's quite a good thing. So the next thing I've got is Athlete's Foot Powder. And Athlete's Foot Powder is actually used to treat ringworm. Now, ringworm isn't in fact a worm, it is in fact a fungal infection. Ringworm can actually be found on lots and lots of different things. The spores of ringworm can actually be on the chinchilla's hay, it can come in with the chinchilla's bedding, it can come in with the chinchilla's food, it definitely lives on wood. So yeah, it can come from a lot of places but it only really causes a problem if your, your husbandry is not quite correct and it might need a little tweaking. For example, if the chinchilla room's too hot or too humid or just damp, um, that can cause ringworm to really, really accelerate and it can cause the chinchilla's fur to fall out. It can cause really, really itchy, flaky skin. It normally starts on the nose and the base of the tail, but it can start anywhere, but that's where it normally starts. Don't beat yourself up if your chinchilla gets ringworm. It's something that you just learn and you deal with as you learn how to care for a chinchilla. So yeah, it could be that the, the husbandry isn't quite optimal or it could be that your chinchilla has underlying health issues. If your chinchilla's not well anyway or has underlying health issues, they, they're more likely to be susceptible to a ringworm breakout. And what you do is you have to Put some of this in your chinchilla's dust and let them roll around in it. That's all you have to do, you just have to sprinkle it in the dust and let them roll, roll around in it. I actually do this as a preventative measure, so I put, even though my chinchillas haven't got ringworm, I often will just add this to their dust just to give them a bit of a boost to make sure they don't actually uh, de uh, develop ringworm. So if your chinchilla has a ringworm, another thing you need to do is you need to remove all the wood from the chinchilla's cage and disinfect the cage and don't put wood back into the cage. You'd have to replace all the wood and put new wood in. Don't put the new wood in until the chinchilla is clear of ringworm because ringworm is really hard to get rid of once it's there. Next thing I've got is raisins. Now you might be thinking, why on earth have you got raisins in your first aid kit? And this is just because if a chinchilla is having a fit or is low in sugar and is having a seizure, then it's always wise to have raisins available. Now, in any other circumstance, I would say do not feed your chinchillas raisins. But in this case, if your chinchilla is having a seizure or a fit, it might be because they're low in sugar, in which case 
yes feed them a raisin because it will actually help immediately spike their sugar up and get them out of a seizure so that's what I would say I always have a few raisins available just in case my chinchillas ever do have a seizure so that's all the things I have in my chinchilla first aid kit for the time being I have things like bandages as well but any serious wounds or any serious issues with my chinchillas I always see a vet um, so this is just things to help along before you see a vet for certain things so yeah that's it really